the second coming of Christ stands as a monumental event in Christian eschatology, heralding a time of judgment, redemption, and the fulfillment of God's kingdom on earth. This event, deeply rooted in spiritual research and biblical teachings, promises a transformative experience for humanity, imbued with divine glory and eternal significance. In Matthew 24 verses 30 to 31, the scripture vividly portrays the second coming, then will appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then all the peoples of the earth will mourn when they see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven, with power and great glory. He will send his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of the heavens to the other. These verses not only depict the majesty of Christ's return, but also assure us of a gathering of the faithful, a unification under the banner of divine love and power. The Apostle Paul, in 1 Thessalonians for verses 16 to 17, reinforces this vision with a promise of resurrection and reunion, for the Lord himself will come down from heaven, with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. This passage not only speaks to the awe-inspiring nature of Christ's return, but also offers comfort in the continuity of community and fellowship. The concept of the second coming is not merely an event to be awaited, but a call to action. It implores us to live in readiness, with hearts and minds attuned to the teachings of Christ and the whispers of the Holy Spirit. In Matthew 24 verse 42, Jesus advises vigilance, therefore keep watch, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. This call to spiritual vigilance serves as a reminder of the unpredictable timing of Christ's return, urging believers to maintain a state of perpetual preparedness and devotion. Engaging with the notion of the second coming invites each of us to reflect on our spiritual journey, to rekindle our faith, and to live in a manner that honors the teachings and sacrifice of Jesus Christ. It's a time to affirm our commitment to Christian values, to deepen our understanding of God's word, and to actively participate in the unfolding of God's plan for humanity. In embracing the promise of the second coming, we find hope, renewal, and the assurance of God's everlasting love and justice. It's a magnificent chapter in the divine narrative, one that offers each of us a role in the celestial story that is to unfold. Let us therefore approach this sacred promise with awe, preparation, and the joy of spiritual anticipation, ready to be part of the glorious kingdom that Christ will establish upon his return. 1. The Rise of False Prophets and Deception Before the second coming of Christ, there will be a rise in false prophets and deceivers claiming to be the Messiah. Jesus warned, for false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect, Matthew 24 verse 24. In the twilight of our current era, as we stand on the cusp of the prophesied second coming of Christ, a phenomenon of staggering and bewildering proportions is set to unfold. This event, foretold with chilling accuracy, speaks of the emergence of false prophets and deceivers, a spectacle so mesmerizing and enthralling that it threatens to ensnare even the most steadfast of believers. The words of Jesus Christ, echoing through the corridors of time, serve as a solemn warning, for false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect, Matthew 24 verse 24. Imagine, if you will, a world where the line between truth and deception blurs, where charismatic figures rise with promises of salvation and deliverance, wielding powers that dazzle and awe. These false prophets, armed with a facade of divinity, will perform feats so extraordinary and miracles so profound that the very fabric of reality seems to warp at their command. Their allure is not merely in the spectacle, but in the seductive call to a salvation that mirrors the true promise of Christ yet is hollow at its core. The cunning of these deceivers lies not only in their miraculous deeds, but in their ability to mimic the true messengers of God. They will speak in tones sweet and persuasive, their words dripping with honeyed promises of peace, prosperity, and a new dawn. But beneath this veneer of benevolence lies a sinister intent, to lead astray the soul's yearning for redemption, to ensnare them in a web of lies so intricate that discerning the truth becomes a Herculean feat as these events unfold, the world will be captivated, watching in awe as these false prophets claim dominion over nature, twisting the laws of the universe to their will. The sun may dance, the seas may part, and the stars may fall at their command, 
each act a masterpiece of deception, each miracle a chapter in their book of lies. The spectacle will be so grand, so utterly convincing, that many will question what they know, and some will abandon their faith to follow these mesmerizing figures. Yet, in this grand theater of deception, the words of Christ resonate with a clarity that pierces the veil of illusion, see, I have told you ahead of time, Matthew 24 verse 25. This forewarning is a beacon to those who believe, a guidepost to navigate the tumultuous seas of these end times. It is a call to vigilance, to discernment, and to an unwavering faith in the true Messiah. The phenomenon of false prophets and deceivers is not merely a test of faith but a crucible in which the true metal of believers is refined. It is a divine paradox, through the very acts of deception, the authenticity of one's faith is revealed. Those who endure, who see beyond the grandeur and the facade, stand as testaments to the power of true belief. In contemplating this impending epoch, one cannot help but be awestruck by the profound complexity of the divine narrative. The second coming of Christ is preceded by a shadow play, a cosmic test of faith where the forces of deception wield the spectacular to lead astray, and the faithful are called to discern the truth amidst a storm of wonders. As we ponder the enormity of what is to come, it is essential to anchor ourselves in the words of Scripture, to be vigilant and prepared, for the arrival of false prophets heralds the dawn of a new era. It is a time of unparalleled challenge and extraordinary wonder, a period when the very essence of belief is tested by the allure of the phenomenal. In this awe-inspiring prelude to the second coming of Christ, we are reminded of the enduring power of faith, the importance of discernment, and the unyielding truth of the gospel. The saga of false prophets and deceivers is not just a tale of caution but a clarion call to steadfastness in the face of the spectacular and the sublime, a testament to the enduring light of Christ in a world shadowed by the spectre of deception. 2. Wars and Rumors of Wars Jesus spoke of increasing conflict leading up to his return, saying, You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come, Matthew 24 verse 6. In the tapestry of prophetic visions that depict the end times, the second point, concerning wars and rumors of wars, stands out with a profound and unsettling clarity. This is not merely a prediction of skirmishes or isolated conflicts, it heralds a period of unparalleled turmoil and strife that will sweep across the globe, setting the stage for the ultimate return of Christ. As we delve into this prophecy, we uncover layers of meaning that are both awe-inspiring and terrifying. The words of Jesus in Matthew 24 verse 6, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, resonate with a chilling prescience, foretelling a time when the drumbeats of war will echo incessantly in every corner of the earth. This prophecy is not just about the physical act of war, it is also about the psychological climate of fear and uncertainty that will pervade societies, as rumors and the threat of conflict become as impactful as the wars themselves. The phrase wars and rumors of wars suggests a dual reality. On one hand, there will be actual wars, with nations rising against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms, manifesting in physical destruction and loss of life. On the other hand, the rumors of wars represent the pervasive anxiety and fear that will grip humanity, even in places where conflict is not immediate. The rumor, the mere whisper of impending war, can unravel societies, sow discord, and breed a pervasive sense of despair and hopelessness. In this prophesied era, war will be both a reality and a shadow, constantly looming over humanity. The actual wars will be devastating, characterized by advanced weaponry and tactics, with nations employing their full military might in bids for supremacy or survival. These conflicts will be staggering in their scale and intensity, often involving multiple nations and causing catastrophic destruction. Simultaneously, the psychological impact of these wars, amplified by the relentless spread of rumors, will create an atmosphere of fear and anticipation that is equally destructive. The constant threat of war will wear down the collective psyche of nations, leading to an environment where trust erodes and societies are perpetually on edge. This period will be marked by an incredible display of human ingenuity and technology in warfare, yet it will also highlight the tragic extent to which humanity can go when led by ambition, fear, and enmity. The advancements in warfare technology and strategy, while awe-inspiring, will also underscore the profound paradox of human progress that our capacity for creation and destruction go hand in hand. 
the prophecy speaks to the resilience and tenacity of the human spirit, as people will continue to seek hope, meaning, and peace amidst the chaos. It will be a time that tests the moral and ethical fabric of societies, forcing individuals and nations to confront their values, beliefs, and priorities. As the prophecy unfolds, it will not only be a showcase of human conflict but also a spiritual battleground where the forces of good and evil vie for supremacy in the hearts and minds of people. The wars and rumors of wars will thus serve as a crucible, refining individual and collective character and setting the stage for the ultimate spiritual reckoning. In this context, the prophecy is both a warning and a call to vigilance. It challenges us to look beyond the surface of military conflicts and geopolitical strife to consider the deeper spiritual, moral, and psychological ramifications. It compels us to reflect on our own roles and responsibilities in a world teetering on the brink of monumental change. The fulfillment of this prophecy will be a defining moment in human history, a period of extraordinary challenge and transformation. It will be a time when the very fabric of civilization will be tested and the true strength and character of humanity will be revealed. As we stand on the precipice of these foretold events, we are reminded of the profound interplay between destiny and free will and the enduring hope that even in the darkest times, the light of peace, truth, and righteousness can ultimately prevail. In summary, the prophecy of wars and rumors of wars is not just a prediction of conflict, it is a reflection of the human condition, a mirror showing us the best and worst of what we are capable of. It serves as a solemn reminder of the fragility of peace and the enduring need for compassion, understanding, and vigilance in our journey through time. As we ponder this prophecy, we are called to navigate the tumultuous waters of the present with wisdom, courage, and an unwavering commitment to forge a future that reflects the highest aspirations of the human spirit. 3. Natural Disasters and Famines There will be an increase in natural disasters and famines around the world. Jesus said, there will be great earthquakes, famines, and pestilences in various places, and fearful events and great signs from heaven, Luke 21 verse 11. The unfolding of natural phenomena, as foretold by the scriptures, heralds a period of unprecedented awe and wonder, signaling the approach of the second coming of Christ. Earthquakes, not just ordinary tremors, but colossal seismic events, will shake the very foundations of our planet, leaving indelible marks on the annals of history. These seismic convulsions will transcend the usual scientific explanations, pointing to a divine orchestration that transcends human understanding. Imagine the Earth, this ancient, enduring sphere, suddenly writhing under invisible cosmic forces, its crust fracturing, mountains trembling, and landscapes transforming before our very eyes. These are not merely natural occurrences, they are celestial signals, divine messages written upon the canvas of creation. The magnitude of these earthquakes will be so extraordinary that they will captivate the attention of every soul, rich and poor, powerful and meek, compelling humanity to gaze in bewilderment at the raw power of creation, and perhaps, to ponder the might of the Creator. In tandem with these earth-shattering events, famines will spread across the globe, not as isolated incidents of scarcity, but as sweeping calamities affecting millions. These famines will challenge our collective morality, test our humanity, and perhaps even redefine the way we share our planet's bountiful yet finite resources. The scarcity induced by these famines will be a clarion call to the world, urging us to unite, to share, and to manifest the virtues of compassion and generosity on a scale never seen before. But the signs do not end with terrestrial upheavals, they extend to the skies. Pestilences, mysterious and rampant, will emerge, defying the strides of modern medicine and challenging the intellect of our finest minds. These plagues will not discriminate, affecting the young and old, the rich and the poor, reminding us of our shared vulnerability and our common destiny. They will serve as a poignant reminder of our finite existence and the urgent need for spiritual redemption. Moreover, the heavens themselves will showcase phenomena that will dazzle and perplex the scientific community. Fearful events and great signs from the sky will unfold, perhaps in the form of celestial alignments or unprecedented cosmic activity, serving as celestial heralds of the approaching divine epoch. These heavenly occurrences will be so magnificent and awe-inspiring that they will capture the collective imagination of humanity, steering conversations and contemplations towards the metaphysical, the divine, and the eternal. 
In this era of signs and wonders, the very fabric of reality will seem to warp and weft under the loom of the divine, crafting a tapestry of events so intricate and interconnected that they can only be ascribed to a higher power. The combined spectacle of earthquakes, famines, pestilences, and heavenly signs will not only test our physical world but will also challenge the spiritual convictions of every human being. As these signs accumulate and intensify, they will serve not merely as harbingers of doom but as divine invitations to introspection, repentance, and ultimately, transformation. The awe and wonder they inspire will not be rooted in fear but in the profound realization of the proximity of the divine, the nearness of a cosmic shift that promises to usher in a new age of spiritual enlightenment and eternal harmony. In this context, the phenomenal events preceding the second coming of Christ are not to be perceived merely as catastrophic anomalies. Instead, they are to be understood as the magnificent prelude to the grand finale of human history, a divine symphony orchestrated by the Creator, leading towards the climactic return of Christ. They remind us that the world as we know it is transient, and that the Eternal, embodied by the return of Christ, beckons with a reality far beyond the ordinary, inviting us into a realm of sublime wonder, divine truth, and everlasting peace. 4. The Gospel Preached to All Nations A key sign of the end times before Christ's return is the global spread of the Gospel. Jesus declared, and this Gospel of the Kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come, Matthew 24 verse 14. The fulfillment of the prophecy that the Gospel will be preached to all nations stands as a staggering, or inspiring testament to the relentless advance of God's Kingdom across the earth. This grand vision, foretold by Jesus himself, heralds the approach of an epochal event in human history, the second coming of Christ. As we delve into the profundities of this prophecy, we find ourselves on sacred ground, witnessing the unfolding of a divine narrative that transcends time and space. The proclamation of the gospel to every corner of the world is a monumental task, one that has engaged the hearts and minds of believers through the ages. This is not merely a religious mandate, it is the cosmic mission entrusted to humanity by the divine, a clarion call that echoes through the annals of time, urging us to carry the message of hope, love, and salvation to every person, in every nation. Imagine the sheer scale of this divine enterprise, where the word of God, carried on the wings of faith, sweeps across the continents, penetrating the jungles of the Amazon, scaling the peaks of the Himalayas, piercing the silence of the Sahara, and resonating through the bustling streets of the world's great cities. The gospel, like a relentless river, flows into every crevice of human existence, quenching the thirst of those who seek the truth and irrigating the barren landscapes of souls in despair. The journey of the gospel through the corridors of time is a saga of extraordinary courage, sacrifice, and miraculous providence. It is a story written in the tears of martyrs and the sweat of missionaries, a narrative of divine love transcending human barriers. The gospel has traversed through persecutions and triumphs, transcending cultural, linguistic, and geopolitical boundaries to reach the farthest outposts of human habitation. In the face of adversity, the gospel shines brightest, revealing the indomitable spirit of those who carry its message. Like a beacon of light in the darkest night, it guides the lost and the weary, offering solace and sanctuary. The spread of the gospel is a testament to the unyielding power of faith, a dazzling display of the Holy Spirit at work, transforming hearts and reshaping destinies. As the gospel reaches the ends of the earth, fulfilling the prophetic vision of a universal awakening, we witness the dawning of a new era. This global evangelization heralds the imminent return of Christ, an event of unparalleled magnitude that will mark the culmination of our earthly pilgrimage and the beginning of an eternal adventure. The universal proclamation of the gospel is not just a harbinger of the second coming, it is a vivid manifestation of God's omnipotence and omniscience. It underscores the meticulous unfolding of divine plans, where every moment in history converges towards a preordained climax, revealing the masterful orchestration of the Creator. The narrative of the gospel's journey is replete with tales of miraculous conversions and revivals, where entire communities have been transformed by the power of the Word. These stories are not mere footnotes in the annals of religious history, they are powerful affirmations of the gospel's living, dynamic essence, capable of rejuvenating the most desolate spiritual wastelands. As the gospel permeates every culture and society, it crafts a tapestry of redeemed lives, each thread bearing witness to the transformative power of Christ's love. 
This grand tapestry, woven with the vibrant hues of human diversity, reflects the beauty and richness of God's creation, united in the harmony of faith. The spread of the gospel to all nations is a clarion call to every believer, urging us to partake in this divine mission, to be the vessels through which the living water of the gospel flows to the thirstiest corners of the earth. It is a call to action, prompting us to transcend our limitations and to embrace the boundless possibilities of divine grace. In the grand narrative of the gospel's global journey, we find our own stories intertwined with the redemptive arc of history, invited to contribute our verses to this eternal song. The preaching of the gospel to all nations is not just a sign of the times, it is a living, breathing reality that invites us to be co-authors of the greatest story ever told, the story of God's unfailing love for humanity. As we stand on the brink of the fulfillment of this prophecy, we are not merely spectators, but active participants in a divine drama that spans the heavens and the earth. The global proclamation of the gospel is a testament to the faithfulness of God, a foretaste of the glory that is to come, and a powerful reminder that the story of salvation is far from over, indeed, it is reaching its most triumphant chapter. As we delve into the prophetic landscape of the end times, the four pivotal signs preceding the second coming of Christ, false prophets, escalating conflicts, natural calamities, and the global proclamation of the gospel stand as heralds of a nearing monumental event. These signs, deeply rooted in biblical prophecies, beckon us to a state of heightened spiritual vigilance and preparedness. The emergence of false prophets and widespread deception, as foretold by Jesus, serves as a stark warning against spiritual complacency. This era, marked by the proliferation of misleading doctrines and counterfeit saviors, demands discernment, urging us to anchor our beliefs firmly in the scriptures to avoid the snares of deception. Wars and rumors of wars, indicative of global unrest, echo the turbulent nature of human history, intensifying as we approach the end times. This escalating conflict is not merely a geopolitical phenomenon but a spiritual call to arms, reminding us that behind the physical strife lies a cosmic battle for souls. In this climate of uncertainty, our faith can be our bulwark, encouraging us to foster peace and reconciliation in a world torn by strife. Natural disasters and famines, with their devastating impact, underscore the fragility of our earthly existence and the urgency of spiritual awakening. These cataclysmic events, while harrowing, serve as somber reminders of the transient nature of worldly life and the imperative of seeking solace in the eternal promise of God's kingdom. The global spread of the gospel, a sign of hope amid turmoil, highlights the relentless march of God's word across the earth, transcending cultural and geographical boundaries. This universal call to salvation reaffirms God's inclusive love and the redemptive potential of the human spirit. It compels us to partake in this divine mission, sharing the transformative message of Christ's love and sacrifice with all. In light of these profound signs, the call to prepare for the second coming of Christ transcends mere anticipation, it invites us to a profound spiritual journey. This preparation is not rooted in fear, but in the joyous hope of Christ's return. It beckons us to live with purpose, integrity, and a deep-seated faith that illuminates our path amidst the encroaching shadows of the end times. To prepare adequately, we must cultivate a robust spiritual life, characterized by prayer, meditation on God's Word, and the nurturing of a Christ-like character. This spiritual fortitude enables us to withstand the trials and tribulations of the last days, standing firm in our faith against the tide of adversity. Moreover, preparing for Christ's return involves active engagement in the world as agents of change and ambassadors of hope. By embodying the values of the gospel, love, mercy, justice, and humility, we not only anticipate the kingdom to come, but actively participate in its unfolding narrative in the present. In conclusion, the signs of the times are not merely prophetic markers, but catalysts for personal and communal transformation. As we navigate the complexities of the end times, our spiritual readiness and commitment to the gospel's ideals will light our path. Let us, therefore, embrace this call to preparedness with a resolute heart and unwavering faith, looking forward to the glorious advent of our Lord, Jesus Christ. In this journey, our ultimate aim should be to cultivate a life so rich in spiritual depth and godly love that, when Christ returns, we may confidently and joyously greet him. Thank you for watching. May you live happily and be blessed. If there are any inaccuracies in this video, 
we sincerely apologize. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, in all your way submit to him, and he will make your path straight. Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6.